Welcome to Hold My Nuts Podcast, man, where I know you're tired of releasing on your keyboards, your laptops, and your desktops, and you're tired of being manipulated and dominated by female culture, man. You in the right place. Go ahead and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. And man, let's get into this video today, man. Today I want to talk to you about why you shouldn't masturbate. Man, this is a really, really big issue that's plaguing a lot of men. And I don't think we really understand the implications of masturbating. I did a video um, about sex being a contract. That when you actually have sex with a person, you are coming into agreement with this person you are coming into agreement with who this person is and if you don't know this person uh you don't know what you're attaching yourself to you don't know what you are agreeing to right the bible says that our bodies are temples you know why should you be joined with a harlot um really the only protections i can see that you can have when you know, engaging in sexual intercourse is within a covenant relationship where uh, this has been ordained by God. Outside of that, you are opening yourselves up to demonic attacks. You are opening yourselves up to every and any type of spirit that this person has. You are coming into agreement with the essence of who this person is. And in most cases, when you're out here doing one night stands, you're meeting people randomly. Um, If you're a woman and you are engaged in prostitution, you know, you're just allowing different people to come inside of you um, for the sake of monetary gain, which I don't know how you can ever put a value on, um, you know, your body. In that regard but you're opening yourselves up to a lot of demonic attacks and spirits and some people are so far gone that they don't care Um, because in reality they have sold their souls to Satan now a lot of people think you have to you know conjure up an evil spirit and you have to do a contract in blood and you have to do some type of ritual in order to sell your soul to the devil And that is simply not the case. You know, once you begin to compromise your character, once you sacrifice your morals and you go against that um, for monetary gain or for power, for whatever the reason may be that you want to offer up your the essence of your self, you have at that moment sold your soul to Satan. Now, the reason I'm talking about this is because, like I was saying, sex is a contract. And when it comes to masturbation, this too is also a sexual act. And even though you are doing this with yourself, you are in the privacy of your own home or your car or bathroom or wherever, you're splattering keyboards, laptops and desktops, desecrating stovetops, rooftops and drop tops with your life force. You are spiritually engaging in a sexual activity, okay? Even though it doesn't involve another person, you are becoming one with something. And in most cases, you are becoming one with whatever you are thinking about at the time. Spiritually, you are becoming one with that thing. And whatever imaginations that you have going on in your mind, you are becoming one with it. Right. You are you are seeing you agree to whatever it is that your mind has conjured up in the imagination. And the reason masturbation is so dangerous has men who are on the semen retention journey and we have been practicing, you know, staying away from just releasing recklessly, releasing, you know, haphazardly releasing, you know, um, just for the sake of releasing, you know, relieving stress or. Whatever the case may be, we understand that when you excessively do these things, 
that your body is breaking down, right? Your body is literally breaking down. When you excessively masturbate, you can feel the implications of that exchange. And what you have to understand is when you release your life source, when you release your semen, and get this, semen is the only thing that cannot be replicated. You cannot manufacture semen in a lab. You cannot um, recreate the components of semen uh, to give to another person outside of the male producing this in his nutsack. That's why you have to go to these sperm banks and they have to get semen from voluntary men who want to who want to give up their semen. Um, but they can't reproduce this in a laboratory. You know, they can make clones. They can do all of this, but they cannot reproduce the semen. And that should let you know how powerful and how unique this life source is. Now, when you give up your semen, whether it be in a woman, whether it be in your hand, um, when you give it up and you, you know, put this wherever you want to put it, laptops, stove tops, keyboards, plasma screens, faces, you are giving up something, right? Number one, it, you're giving up something physically. It is damaging your body, especially if you are doing this excessively. Now, if you are doing this in the proper context and things of that nature, then you're fine because it's a natural biological process. But it's also a spiritual process as well. And what you have to understand is when you engage in this masturbation, when you engage in these imaginations in your mind about whatever it is you're thinking about, you are giving up something spiritually. Now, what I'm about to say to you is maybe something you have never heard before. And I can't definitively say that this is the case, but I'm going to make a case for it and I'm going to lay down an argument, not really your argument, but I'm going to lay down the, frame, the framework for why this may be true. So I suggest you go and you do your own research on the topic and see what you can come up with. I've heard it said to me that when you, well, before I get to this, we know that in the physical reality, whatever is taking place in the physical reality, whatever is taking place in your physical reality has already happened in the spiritual world. It has already happened in the heavenly places, right? It has already happened. So if you are going through a particular situation, that's because in the spirit, it's already been birthed and it is seeking manifestation into the physical realm, right? Whatever issues you are dealing with presently in the physical, it is because those issues have been birthed in the spiritual. Nothing happens in the physical reality without it happening first in the spiritual reality. A lot of people don't understand this. This may go over your head. If it's too much for you, then I understand, you know, watch another video. But I'm trying to get, lay the framework for what I'm about to say that everything that happens in the physical world is predicated on a spiritual world. OK, your career, um, your relationships, the things that you run into, the material things that you have, that you possess. You've possessed these things in the spirit before you possess them in the physical. You have to understand this. You've possessed them in the spirit world, right? So what I'm about to say is basically every act of sin, every act of Whatever it is you do from your actions, you've already committed these actions in the realm of the spirit. And now they are seeking manifestation in the physical reality. So it was said to me that when you masturbate, now you might think this is crazy, but it's been said to me that when you masturbate, 
what's really happening is you could potentially be having sex with a evil spirit in the realm of the spirit this demon this entity is having sex with you in the realm of the spirit and you begin to get these urges these urges these uncontrollable desires to express yourself sexually in the physical reality now i know this may be heavy and like i said before i haven't come to a conclusion on this i'm doing my own research but i wanted to drop this and if you guys have any information about this leave it in the comments but i wanted to drop something heavy and weighty on you for you to consider the next time you think about rubbing one out okay so it said that you are actually having sex or a demon is actually having sex with you and now that this demon is having sex with you it is seeking the birth of this sexual experience in physical reality remember nothing happens in the physical realm unless it happens in the spiritual realm first all your problems that you're dealing with is happening in the spirit first before it actually happens in the physical okay you have to understand this that's why when jesus gave the disciples the way to pray he said this he said this is how you pray our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven heaven is not talking about the place where god resides but the heavens the heavens the the, the second realm of where spiritual activity is taking place right he said that he gives us the authority to whatever we bind on earth shall be bound in heaven not the heaven where God resides, not the throne room, but the heavens where your spiritual blessings reside. Ephesians 1 and 3 says that God has given us every spiritual blessing um, in the heavens, meaning that the blessing that you're supposed to have, God has already given these things to you prior to you even coming here. Before the world even began, these blessings have been reserved for you. And Jesus is saying that we can bring that heaven down here on earth. That will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So bringing the, the, the heavens down to our physical reality. Okay. Now there's two sides to every coin. Right. When we fall into these temptations, it's because these temptations, these acts of sin, these acts of transgressions. These pits, these traps, these, you know, these, these snares that have been set out for us, they're happening in this realm of the spirit. And when they get solidified in the realm of the spirit, they seek expression in the physical world. It has to come out in the physical reality. I know this is deep. I know this is heavy, but I need you to really, really try to soak it all in. And really try to understand what it is I'm saying. A lot of the things that you are dealing with is because these things have happened before they even arrived to you. Before you even experience them in the real physical world, you have already experienced them in the spirit world. Now you say, how do we know this? The number one reason, the number one way you have to pay attention to the dreams that you have right a lot of times these things are happening in your dream world and you're not aware of it okay demons are forging covenants with you and doing all types of weird things in these dreams and their symbols and symbolic situations that are happening and you think it's just you know a product of your subconscious mind and what you saw or ate yesterday but it's something far bigger than that right you have to pay attention you have to have a spirit of discernment right you have people 
astro projecting into your dream world. You have witches and sorcerers doing all types of evil projections against you, trying to bring you to their will. They're trying to force you and to make you bow down to their will. Right. But they're doing this not with hand to hand combat. They're doing this spiritually. They're doing this in the realm of the spirit. And a lot of the times when you fall into these different traps, you have seen it before in your dream world, but you haven't been able to perceive it. The Bible says that God gives man dreams, but he's not able to perceive it. He's not able to understand what's happening. I know this is deep. But when it comes back to masturbation, you are more than likely giving up something spiritually every time you ejaculate. Every time you practice the habit of masturbation, you are giving up something spiritually. You are exchanging something with the evil spirit, potentially. You could be exchanging your promotion. You could be exchanging that relationship that you've been waiting on. You could be exchanging that financial breakthrough. You could be exchanging, um, you know, meeting that person that's going to put you to the next level. You could be exchanging a variety of different things. You have no idea every time you ejaculate what you're trading. You think it's just semen. You think it's just semen on a face. You think it's just semen on her neck. You think it's just semen in the back of her esophagus. But you are giving up something when you splatter that keyboard, laptop, desktops, stove tops, rooftops, black tops, drop tops, and you think it's all cool. What are you giving up spiritually? What are you sacrificing for that one isolated moment of temporary pleasure? And then you multiply that by however many times you do this. What are you giving up? Only the chosen ones are going to be able to really dig into what I'm trying to say. Like I said before, I have not come to a conclusion on this, but... I have to be honest, it does make sense to me. I'm a very deep thinker, right? And I, I like to evaluate and ponder on these heavenly ideas, concepts. And I wanted to bring this to you for you to ponder on these things as well. And when I do have a more solid understanding of this particular topic when it comes to masturbation and could potentially be having sex with demons unaware and trading your future for sexual pleasure I will make another video on this I know it was heavy I know it was deep but I need you guys to dig in I want to go through this together right I want to go through this together. So drop the comments, drop the Bible verses, drop the resources, whatever it is. And let's put our heads together and let's work through this together because we're already on this semen retention journey. And we're trying to preserve our seed. But what if, what if it's more than just whacking off? What if it's more than just losing your uh, sexual prowess, confidence? What if, what if you are exchanging your spiritual blessings every time you ejaculate? What if you are uh, giving up your future every time you ejaculate? What if you are really having sex with a demon Every time you ejaculate, what if and how could we come to the understanding? The one thing I'm going to leave you guys with is this. Sex is a spiritual act. It's a spiritual act. How can two become one? They're not becoming one in the flesh. 
though that's what it is. They are becoming one in the spirit. They are become they become one in an agreement. So when you actually are having sex with yourself in your mind and you're somewhere else in outer space thinking about some situation or scenario, you are coming into agreement with those thoughts, those projections that you're having. This is Hold My Nuts Podcast, man. Let me know what you think. Hit the like button for your boy if you enjoyed this video. And I'm going to holler at you guys in the next one. Peace.